Fox Toledo Hardcore Football is brought to you by Central Catholic High School. Now, here's all of tonight's action. Seniors, your last shot at Central. It's also homecoming. I'll tell you one thing. Ten years from now, you may not remember who the hell the queen was, but you're going to remember this game. You're going to remember every play of it, what the score was, how you did, how it felt, everything else. That's what you're going to remember. How's it, how are we going to remember, boys? How about like last year when we beat their <laughs> Doug Pearson, I love you. Three more weeks of hardcore football, including tonight. That means it's the race for the chase for high school gridiron glory. And to break down our Jim White Honda Game of the Week, it's about playoffs and the rivalry. Here's Mike Thompson. Mikey? Man, I got goosebumps just listening to Coach Pearson there. Now, if there was ever a must-win game for any team, tonight it fell on the shoulders of St. John's. Currently ranked 13th in the Division I Region II computer points. The Titans are five spots back of just making it to Week 11. Now, on the other hand, the Fighting Irish, they're second in their region. As long as they continue to win, hosting a first-round playoff game looks pretty good. All right, here we go. Irish and Titans. First snap of the game, Brogan Roback rolling right, throwing it downfield, picked off by the Irish's Derek Hafner. I think the Irish like that one. They're uh, set up in good field position. Ensuing possession, fourth and goal from the 20. Derek Whelan catches it from Deshaun Kaiser. PAT no good, 6-0 Irish. Late first quarter, now Titans fumble. That was their third turnover of the quarter. Third turnover of the first quarter. Second quarter now, Central going to make the best of it. Kaiser hits Amir Edwards for a touchdown. That was 20 yards. Two-point conversion, no good. 12-0 Central. Another Irish or Titans turnover led to this touchdown. Kaiser, 22-yard hookup to Logan Lorenzen. 19-0 there, 21-7 at the break. Now, Coach Pearson and his crew cut this deficit in half. They're down 28-14. Roback hits Joe Roby for a 24-yard pickup. St. John's is working on something here. Eight minutes to go, fourth and 11. Incomplete turnover on downs. Now Central and Edwards would run out the clock. They score a touchdown late. Final score of this game, 35-14. Irish thinking they got something heading into the postseason here. And that's great to have the kids confident because I, I, I keep bringing it up. You know, we're coming off that Finley game. That's something we can shake kids' confidence. And we've got nothing but better since then. And it's been because of the kids and their attitude and their and their, uh, their fortitude. We had to work hard. We, had, we knew we had to come out and play this week. And everybody stepped up this week. Defense, offense, offensive line, defensive line. We all play hard. We all played our, our butts off. I'm really, really disappointed. And if you look at the film, it's not just one guy or two guys. It's just, you know, we had a lot of guys make mistakes tonight, a lot of you know, and older guys as well. And that, that can't happen in a game like this. As you heard, Coach Pearson, definitely frustrated with this one. I didn't show you a highlight, but they also had a safety. They had a couple other turnover on downs. And I, I think some another turnover, and it was just awful for what Coach Pearson and his gang wanted to do. Now, as for Central, they're looking pretty good. They're uh, number two in the computer rankings, and you really can't go down with a win, especially when you beat a Division I team. So Central's looking pretty good. Where are we going to go next week for the Jim White Honda Game of the Week? Howie, we had a good one, 35-14 final at UT between Central and the Johnnies. Where can the fans take us next week? Well, both Central and St. John's are prime candidates for the next Jim White Honda Game of the Week, but there are several other good choices, too. Hardcore football is all about being a democracy. Get your vote on at foxtoledo.com by Tuesday night. And moving on to Whitmer. Panthers trying to stay perfect. Giants trying to stay qualified for the playoffs. Tyler Wolf trying to stay upright. He got crunched, loses the ball to Nick LaPointe of the Panthers on the very next play. We were Alexander. This guy can move. Moves into the end zone from 22 yards away. It's 7 nothing. Next highlight we have Jody Webb. A little bit later on, he makes the turn. He scores for a three-yard run to make it 14-0. Early second quarter, Tyler Polka back from injury to Nigel Hayes, the very tall Nigel Hayes in the corner of the end zone. 28 yards to make it 28-0. Whitmer stays perfect by winning 58-20. And as the playoffs near, it's that time of year where league titles are decided. Southview could be in the driver's seat of the NLL if they beat Anthony Wayne tonight. And both teams need to keep winning for the playoffs too, especially the Generals, their 10th in region. They told me last week playoffs are their priority right now over the league title 
Can't really say I blame them. Coach Macy's, he's all about getting his intensity on and getting that victory. Third quarter is Cougars leading 22 to seven. JQ Bowers getting his wiggle on into the end zone. Six yards for six, 29-7 Southview. General still fighting though. Josh Linke to Sam Bruno, streaking down the left sideline, 29-14. The tubas for Anthony Wayne, their band's pretty good. They were happy. Cougars though, they were too much. Austin Valdez going one way, pass kind of going the other way to Nate Hall. Breaks the tackle there and he keeps on going. 69 yards and Safi wins it, 36 to 14. Playing for it every week, playing for it every week, you know. Couple couple turns to go, a uh, couple of teams to work hard to get ready for the for the next game. So uh, we're, we're just trying to stay healthy like everybody else is. You feel like you're uh, getting better, you know, at the right time of the season? Well, it, you know, I thought a couple times we were getting better, and then I thought a couple times we were getting kind of crazy. And we're just getting the party started. More NLL ball coming up after the break. Playoffs, playoffs, playoffs. We break it down next on Hardcore Football. Now back to Fox Toledo Hardcore Football. Well, it's been a strong year for Ottawa Hills. Green Bears are 5-2, and two, but for right now, the OHSAA point system says that's not enough. Not enough to make the playoffs by one spot. And so before a huge game next week against Northwood, the OH, I know, has to keep winning. Dan Barry on the other side, first quarter. Ottawa Hills up 7-0. Will Longthorne, who scored a million touchdowns last week. Scores on a run where he ran for a million yards, actually more like 42. 14-0 Bears. Problems for Danbury on the not-so-special teams. Corey Shank doesn't shank it, he just picks it up and no chance to get the first down. So Ottawa Hills with a short field and guess who scores? Yeah, Mr. Longthorne. No surprise there and Ottawa Hills, they improved to 6-2 and improved their playoff chances too. 34-22 the final. We mentioned earlier about that huge game against Northwood. Rangers hosting Toledo Christian tonight. Ken James, love the fact that he always wears shorts, even if it's cold. First possession, Nick Russell to Jacob Davenport, who spins away from tacklers, gains 35 yards before he finally gets taken down at the five yard line. Three plays later, Russell, 11 yards through the air to Evan Perkins, gets inside position on his defender to make a seven nothing Rangers. Next possession, first play from scrimmage, and Russell, the quarterback keeper, 15 yards. This came after a good punt return to get them there. Final score of this one, Northwood beats Toledo Christian 56 to six. Well, does winning ever get old? For Genoa, at least the streak's getting up there. It's at 46, but the Comets play like they're forever young, forever hungry. Keep the streak going. Tonight against Woodmore, going for win 47 in a row. Pick it up in the first quarter, it's Kyle Nutter. This guy scores a lot. Takes the pitch, and he takes the pitch 18 yards for the TD. 7-0, Genoa later in the first. They go to the air this time. Josh Breyer to the other Nutter brother. Things getting nutty in Genoa. Andrew Nutter, 25 yards, and a sliding catch. And later on, Brandon Roberts, who scored five times last week. 10-yard gallop for the score. Genoa wins it their 47th straight, 59-6. Back to the NLL, Ma Mee has some ground to make up to get to the postseason, but Northview's not a gimme game, not this year. First quarter, first and 10 from their own 12. This is a long quarterback keeper for Mr. Jake Schneider. By long, I mean 88 yards. Ma Mee up seven nothing after that, more from Schneider later. This time through the air to Dakota Fanning, just kidding, Dakota Windangle for the touchdown, 21 nothing Ma Mee. Northview would score later. Corey Bowman runs it in to make it 21 7, but Ma Mee wins this big 62 34. Out in Perrysburg, Yellow Jackets are seventh in region now, hosting Napoleon. Wildcats have played a lot of teams close, though. Two and a half minutes before half. Napoleon up 6 zip. Make it 14 0 after Skylar Anderson pounded it in. He also scored in a two point conversion. Perrysburg's turn. Second play on their drive, and Nate Walker tips it to himself. Interception. Sets up the Cats deep in Jackets territory. Five plays later, they would take advantage. Jacob Plassman putting some touch on the ball. Tyler Miller comes down with it, 11 yards. Napoleon was up 21 zip at the break and they beat Perrysburg. Huge win, possibly crushing the playoff hopes, 34 to 15. 
And right now we're stepping aside, but when we come back, the brother of Jack Miller is getting similar big time looks. And so he has some big time business coming up. Matt Miller is the subject of our Hardcore Recruiting Minute next on Hardcore Football. You want to win. I mean, it's a uh, rivalry. And uh, as I've said before, I've been blessed in being in Auburn, Alabama, and Ohio State, Michigan, and, Auburn, uh, and, and, and this one, uh, Toledo against a team down south. When you win that rivalry game, we could enjoy it for a good month before the bowl game. When you lose it, it gives you a sick feeling in your stomach for the next nine months. Huge rivalry game bumped up in the schedule to tomorrow so that more students can bear witness to Northwest Ohio's version of the backyard brawl. And speaking of college clashes, that's what schools are basically doing for the attention of Matt Miller. The St. John's Junior is attracting loads of attention, and so the Lyman caught our eye for this week's Hardcore Recruiting Minute. Jack Miller made the jump from St. John's to Michigan. His brother Matt might follow in the same footsteps. Just been busy with a lot of visits. Uh, I've been all around Michigan, Notre Dame, West Virginia. Uh, I plan on going to Michigan State, Tennessee, and Wisconsin as well. So it's going great right now, and it's a lot of fun. So far, the junior lineman has an offer from Toledo. His coach expects more to come. I've had a lot of requests for videotapes already. So, you know, obviously Matt's got a, a great career ahead of him, and uh, he's going to be a dynamite college player. Right now, Matt's about 6'5 and a lean 250, and he has time to grow. Bigger schools are recruiting him for the O-line. Max schools are looking at him. It doesn't matter what line he plays. Campus lifestyle is big. The academics is big. Uh, the coaching staff is big. Playing time is big. You know, there's all kinds of these different factors that go into it. So what you have to do is you just kind of try to balance them out and see which is the best spot for you. Michigan, uh, in and of itself, is a great place, and uh, I love it, and, it, and it's great. Um, and having my brother there has exposed me to a lot of it, which is really cool. Um, obviously, I would love to go up there and play with Jack and be with him, too. But, you know, th at the same time, you want to do your own thing. So while Reed Uniting with his older brother isn't a given. It looks fairly certain it'll be Miller time for some big school somewhere. Well, opportunities knocking for Oak Harbor. They've lost three games, but they're playing Clyde tonight, a team in a higher division and a team that's second in their region at that higher division. That means it's a huge game. Oak needing to go for broke. Pick it up in the third quarter. Clyde's Brad Smith, no relation to the guy in the NFL. Takes it 37 yards to the hizzy. Clyde up 28-0 comfortably, but Oak Harbor trying to rally because, like I said, Oak needing to go for broke. Alex Bergman taking it in from a yard away, 28-7. Then in the fourth, Brian Mallerney to Joey Mallerney. 10-yard score, but Clyde getting the win, 35-14. And if the playoffs started right now, Carey would play Hopewell louder, and guess what? They did so today, and it's only the regular season. They even got home field right, too. End of the second quarter. Tyler Tyree, got huge shoulders, man. 16 yards, 21-7, four minutes left in the third, carries Austin Shannon, takes it 59 yards. Speaking of large shoulders, what are those shoulder pads, huh? 59 yard score, they would go for two, it'd be 21-15. Two minutes left in the game. Tyree again, this time from eight yards away, that would seal it. Huge win, final score. Hopewell Loudon, that is big, 29-15, the final. More football coming up, but also there was a big announcement at the Speedway about its future. We'll have what the crystal ball holds up next, after the break. So at Toledo Speedway, we're going to provide seating for our fans and spectators that matches what's available at Michigan International Speedway. That's right, Toledo Speedway is upgrading its seating from the mainly wooden ones to stuff that's made of steel and aluminum. The project is expected to be done at the midway point of next season. And we talked about how Brian was beaten last week by Patrick Henry, uh, or at least, you know, we all know that, but they're still eighth right now in the region, except they're playing a perfect Liberty Center team. That's either a roadblock or a speed bump in the schedule. Let's check the highlights of tonight's game. Big time game, big time playoff implications in this one. Brian in the second half down 22 to three, but they're on the comeback trails. They take a look at the fireworks. Austin Schimoller, he's the backup, throws a Derek hug. Three hugs for everybody. Then Brandon Ponsack throws for the touchdown and now it's 22-17, still on the comeback trail. Ponsack, 
It's gonna hit Derek Hug again. Who wouldn't want to give the ball to Hug? For another big play, this would set up a touchdown and a conversion, putting them up 25 to 22. Huge comeback with Liberty Center QB Josh Drain throws to Anthony Ray guy for a big pass. Flag was thrown, but was overturned. That would be the winning touchdown for Liberty Center. They withstand the comeback attempt by Ryan, and they go on to win 29 to 25. Let's go to Mike Thompson to talk some playoffs. All right, uh, Howie, thank you very much. Okay, now, while all this stuff is unofficial, just kind of let you know where some of your teams may be uh, heading into week nine. All right, we've got uh, Toledo Whitmer. They win. They're definitely going to stay where they're at. Southview knocks off Anthony Wayne. They're good in Division One. Another interesting division, uh, we'll kind of skip by Division Two, but in Division Three, you've got Port Clinton. They're sitting at five. A win for them might uh, last two weeks of the season, might get them that home game in the first week of the playoffs. Brian, a tough loss to Liberty Center, but if you look at Brian, though, or uh, Liberty Center is number one in Division Five, Region 18. So even though Brian lost, that could really help them. Again, we're going to have updates throughout the week. Howie's going to let you know how the computer points shake out. And we'll be here for you next week for the Jim White Honda Game of the Week. Howie, back to you, buddy. Thank you very much, Mikey. Game 6 ALCS will be seen right here on Fox Toledo tomorrow night. Tigers trying to stave off elimination again and force a Game 7. A special edition of Fox Toledo News Weekend will air after that. And speaking of special, Mike Thompson special for capturing these special moments in the way he can. Hardcore hits. Have a good night, everybody.